some of your magic, Tom. You stuck around? That's good to see. Do some more songs. We're going to have uh, a couple people tell a story about uh, Paul. Play some more songs he covered. Do some go back in time with some Muddy Waters, too. But here's a song we wrote. I'm a professor at uh, Drake University, and uh, <laughs> Todd woke up back. <laughs> I get to teach a class on the blues. I wrote the class about six years ago, and it's for all incoming first-year students. It's a writing class, but uh, I designed a class to talk about the blues. And I start the class by saying to my 18 and 19, Jordan was in that class, and I said, Are the, what, do you, what do you think about the blues? And most students of your 18, 19 said, well, the blues is dead or the blues is dying because you don't hear it on the radio. You don't hear it. Now, well, yeah, I get them. The good news is that by the end of the class, students like Jordan and all the students, after we talk about it and have conversations and they have to go out and see a real live blues band and Bob Pace, Heath Allen come in, and they understand that the blues is not dead. Uh, it's still alive, and it's the root of all. So what we're going to do here, and we're going to do about five songs, and we're going to show you a progression of the blues. It's kind of a little mini education. There are no credits available for this one. So don't go to Drake on Monday morning and say you want a half a credit. You're, you graduated. You're done. You don't need any more credits. We're going to start with the Delta era blues. And so the godfather of the blues, a guy named Robert Johnson, right? He... Um, he always wore his hat off to the side like this. He had a bad eye, 
and he'd like to sing to him. Uh, he'd pick one woman out and then just sing to him and try to romance him, right? But he had this bad eye. He didn't like the women to, to see that bad eye. Robert Johnson was the story that he went to the crossroads, right, of Highway uh, 49 and 61, sold his soul to the devil, and he could play like nobody's business. Uh, he actually, and then he also died at age 27. And you know about rock stars dying at age 27, right? Yeah, Jim? yeah, yeah 20, he was the first. So he was kind of the first rock star. Ultimately, he died a three-day death. And I love studying the history on, on him. It's so fascinating. He's got three different grave sites down in the Delta. Nobody exactly knows, um, but if you're in a documentary, there's a nice one about uh, John Hammond Jr. did it. And I'm starting to ramble on, so i got to get going here. But, <laughs> but that's the professor. I mean, I mean class has just got out, so I feel like I'm lost. Like, this is, who needs a classroom when you got a church right here in Byron? <laughs> So we're going to do an old Robert Johnson song, but we want to do it a little bit more modern. This is the Buckmiller Schwager version of a Delta Blues. We're going to start in the Delta, work our way up the river. This is Walking Blues.
after the Industrial Revolution, the blues moved out of the Delta region. A lot of the people, including the musicians, went northward up the river. So one of the places they landed was uh, Memphis, Tennessee on Beale Street, right? So that's guys where B.B. Uh, King uh, cut his teeth. We got to play on Beale Street. So let's take a little stop in Memphis. And let's do a little B.B. King.
Memphis, the blues kept moving around the country. And uh, guys like Muddy Waters, yeah. who's got a connection to tonight, right? If you know this history with Johnny Winters and all the way down to Paul. So things got loud in Chicago. If you know anybody from, anybody from Chicago in here? Yeah, because you'd be able to hear them from them because they're loud people. And so when the blues guys got up to Chicago, they, their acoustic guitars wasn't quite loud enough, so they had to experiment with amplification. Brian Schwager is happy for that because he likes a loud guitar. That's happy there. So, um, so let's do a little Chicago blues and minors. You know we're serious. Well, Luther Allison. Destroy yourself because you sit a rain all day drinking that red cherry wine. Oh. And I'm sitting here wondering, wondering what, what can I do?
knows what's going on inside your head. your grave will be cherry red. Let's do another Chicago one. The typical Chicago shuffle kind of sounds like this. Maybe Jordan can help me out. This is the Typical Chicago. So Eddie Taylor was the guy that kind of started that. So let's do one of those traditional old Chicago blues. Byron, get ready for this nookie. <laughs> now blues. Chicago, the blues hit Chicago, something funny happened. The blues kind of died. Anybody know why? Disco. Disco? Uh, just about, not quite there. <laughs> Guys like Elvis Presley and Chuck Berry took the traditional 12 bar blues and they took that shuffle out and made it a straight uh, rock feel. And, and rock and roll was invented. And so, that's, yeah, it's not a bad thing. So rock and roll went up and the blues, like Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf, kind of went into this period of like, what are we gonna do now, right? So the blues kind of went into hibernation for a little bit while rock and roll took off, I'm glad it did. But then good thing, 
After some time, uh, certain places in the country brought back the blues, and one of those places was Texas. And so the guy that got me into the blues when I was a radio DJ at KWYR FM in Winter, South Dakota, I heard a guy named Stevie Ray. Yeah! And that changed things. <laughs> So look, so that makes us to the present day where you got a guy like Paul Nelson trying to keep the blues alive by playing the classics and by playing his own music, right? And so Brian and I are really passionate about this. Like that's why we try to educate a little bit. Not that you know, you don't, like this is a savvy crowd. You know this stuff, but it's kind of fun just to hear about it. So when you get to the present day, what year is it? 2020? I lose track, man. I'm getting so old. So we try to... Pay attention to the old stuff, but write stuff that's relevant to us. And so I wrote a song, and I played it here last time, and I broke down. It's a song I wrote for my daughter. It's in the spirit of a B.B. King ballad. And she just turned 13 years old. She's my oldest. And so she's never been a teenager. I've never had a daughter that's a teen. I've never had this before. So I think it's an interesting time for a father and daughter. I wanted her to know how I feel. 
She's not here tonight. This is a song. If you're a parent or a grandparent or a mother today, maybe this song means a little something extra. Song I wrote is called Bryn Virginia. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. first record we got requests we're talking about the new blues was what it sounds like for buck miller swagger i don't think maggie's here tonight so we can sing the song 
One, two, three, four. Attitude, messed up hair, probably drunk, but I don't care. And she's downright mean. I think I found the girl of my dreams. I miss Maggie. Check. Are we having a good time tonight? You know how special this place is. We're from Des Moines. We don't always get to get up here. We come a couple times because the shows are so good. I wish we could get up. It's a special thing. Byron, thank you so much for being the man. You know, this means a lot. You take care of us. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, we got CDs for sale. You want to check those out? And uh, I think it would mean a lot if you would repeat some lyrics after me. We gotta get you singing. Yeah, here we go, here we go. I see this dancer. Just repeat after me. Here we go. Well, hot mess, Maggie, go. Hot mess, Maggie. Hot mess, Maggie. Hot mess, Maggie. Come on. Hot mess, Maggie. Hot mess, Maggie. I think we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it one more time. A little louder. Come on, help us out. Here we go. Hot Miss Maggie, hey! Hot Miss Maggie, 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 Hot original songs and get back into some Paul songs and uh, I think we got a special tribute in the form of a poem that somebody wrote and a story that I like to hear. Let's do one more of our own song. You heard about my story with Britain Virginia. It's time to pick on Brian Schwager. How's his guitar playing tonight? Is it satisfying? Yeah. Yeah. It's our third night in a row so we're 
We get a little friendly, a spicy with each other. Well, we were playing, so every weekend is a different town, and every town is a different nickname, right? So we played in the, the River City in Yankton, South Dakota. You were there, Tom. Yeah, we played in the Steels. Every town's got a nickname. What's, does Palmer have a nickname? The Byron's. Byron's Town. That's all it is. <laughs> Center of the center of the music universe for names here. Yeah, so we were playing in the Queen City, and it was a, not a very good crowd. It was probably like one table was left at 1 a.m. The band just wanted to get on the road and get home, which I did too. Now Brian was the only single uh, man in the band at the time, so we always got to make sure you know if something. But anyways, we're in the last song. It's about five minutes to 1 a.m., and in through the side door walks a bombshell. This girl was on fire. She came in smoking hot. And I looked at Brian and said, Brian. And Brian got all, what's that word you would call it? Brian saw this girl, and as he's playing pretty well tonight, that girl made him forget everything he knew, and he just couldn't remember how to play. It's like there was 18 strings on that thing. I'm like, so I go over like a good mentor. Say, this is what this is what the old guys do. Like, Brian, you got to get it together. This could be the next Mrs. Brian Swagger. And you know what he, he, he says? Buck, you know what? You're right. You're always right. I never said always. That. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I never said that. And so then Brian says, you know, okay. And then he got back to the guitar playing like you're seeing tonight. Like it's on his and the tubes almost lit on fire because of this girl. But the story doesn't end well. I know, it's a, this is why you gotta write a song about it. We were about ready to play that last song and Brian was probably gonna sneak off into the midnight hours of the Queen City and do whatever they do. And the, I don't know what these young kids are doing these days. But that girl walked right out the damn door without Brian. It was a bit, no, it was hard. And Brian was like, fuck, I don't know, man. So we, we had... <laughs> Scoots. So we had the guidance counselor on the way home. We were doing telehealth to get Brian, make some cheers, because he was heartbroken. This Queen City girl. He said, Buck, you got to write a song for the Queen City. So we wrote a song for Brian to get through this tough time. It's called the Queen City Queen. <laughs>
City Green. Whatever that thing, Brian. It's just one girl, Brian. Where's my girl about there that had a story about Paul in that poem? Come on, we were talking about the break about Paul. And she just really had a typical Paul story, and she showed me a, a short poem. I think this is a good venue. This wouldn't fly in, in Ankeny in some places, but it's going to fly right here. Do you want to you want shut the shots? Um, Marie Farrell. Sioux City and uh, <laughs> Joey Pufumi's roadie when he went at Paul, or in Iowa, uh, nine times that I packed out Joey Pufumi's drum kit four or five times that I went to breakfast with Paul with all of them and what I always saw about Paul was this beautiful humble soul this heart that no matter how tired no matter how late a gig had run three o'clock in the morning in Perkins and he's just as interested in this drunk who obviously has never held a guitar in his hands as he is in his own bandmates truly listening and being kind to this, this person he had encountered on his journey. So I didn't know well, Paul well as a friend, but I, I loved the man and I felt like I knew his soul. And I knew that his bandmate Joey was hurting. There's a lot of reasons I was at the location. Uh, a couple of days after when I wrote, um, on the banks of a river's bend, news. I'm trying to take it in. I was here last night, all in my world was right, under trees bare but covered with hope, spring. Flock of pelicans, white on the water, resting wings. I came back today to find them gone. That's what they do at this time of year, keep moving on. Pelicans are gone and that makes sense. News of loss, and it makes no sense at all. Pelicans should be gone, not our friend Paul. I guess we are all just migrating, adding joy and beauty where we can. Sitting on the bend in the beauty of spring, not yet began. It hurts to know all seasons have passed for this great good man. It seemed that he was in his prime. It wouldn't have seemed to be his time. We want to sit on this bank and cry. We want to sit long to answer why reasons. Like seasons are hard to tell apart sometimes. That. So that's your heart and your soul. That's what the blues is about. Yeah. Talking about your heart and your soul. Right there. I thank you for that. Thank you for that. We were playing at Winter Blues Fest in Des Moines, and Paul was playing upstairs that night. And we were uh, in the lobby playing. And so it was a good crowd. I remember we were just playing the duo, and all of a sudden, Paul comes in with his leather jacket, and he sits down and watches. I don't think he knew us at that time. But man, me and Brian perked up. We looked at each other like, oh shit, Paul's here to watch us. I don't think he cared about us. But it's just one of those times. Another time, he was playing with uh, Johnny Winter down at uh, Woolies in downtown. And uh, Johnny needed a super reverb amp, which is a special kind of amp. Well, if anybody's got that amp in town, it's my guy, Brian Swagger. So they called him because they didn't have that amp. So Brian lent his amp to Johnny Winter that night. I think that's just a, kind of a cool for just guys like that. So we had these kind of couple of run-ins, and we we're proud of that. And we know Johnny was the main guy for Muddy Waters, right? And Hard Again, that, that CD was so important. So let's do a Muddy Waters in tribute. And keep it in. This is a fighting song, but don't get any ideas. Just 
to rid the graveyard of pain. I'm shooting two stone bullets like a falling chain. I'm drinking TNT, I'm smoking dynamite. I hope some screwball starts a fight because I'm ready. Another muddy water, I think you know this one.
Here's song we wrote called These Are the Good News.
ever join a band, I hope you get in a band with good fellas like the people behind me. I'm really lucky that I get to play night in and night out with my main man, Brian Schwager, and his rhythm section was incredible, Todd Mason, Jordan Gould. It's intimidating having such a media influencer right here. I love your internet shit. You're, there's stuff on me, that's gold. That's kind of famous. I wrote this song right in the middle of COVID when things weren't going so rough. And I had to be reminded that even though there's challenges and things might not be the best, there's a little bit of good in every single day. And if you wait for the good days to come upon you, you might be waiting, right? You look back at old photos and say, those were the good days, right? Well, what if today is one of those good days and you forget to live it? So that's all we're trying to do. I wrote this song to remind myself as a father and as a husband, as a bandmate, to enjoy the moment at the music center of the world right here in Palmer and Byron. Thinking about Paul Nelson. It's an honor to be here. Thanks, Byron, for having us and trusting us to do this tonight. Just trying to keep the blues alive. If you want love, you got to give love. If you want peace, you got to give peace. If you want hope, Thank you. 